Hi, welcome back to MEE and 221. Today we are going to talk about non-ideal connections. Up to now we have been assuming that our connections are ideal, no friction. But in reality what happens is every kind of connector, if, the, if it allows some motion, see welder connections, there is no motion so there is no question of friction, right? But every other kind of connection which has motion will have friction. We are going to consider only one kind of uh, connector which has friction for this particular uh, class which is sliding. Basically when two things slide past each other, I have a sliding joint and we are going to look at what happens due to friction in this sliding joint. Now you might have seen this thing in uh, your physics class but, and probably it is kind of confusing to you. So we are going to do it in a very systematic way and uh, figure out how to do all these kinds of things. Okay. But before we start, as usual, please get a pen paper, calculator, ruler so that you can draw and calculate with me. Please remember you cannot build muscles by watching an exercise video. You have to actually do the exercise. Okay. So let's start. Um, so first item we are going to look at uh, friction and what this entails. So we are going to look at it in a big picture way. First thing is it is a force that opposes relative sliding. It does not oppose motion. It opposes sliding. So if two things go like that together, there is no need for friction. You see what I mean? There is no sliding. It is only when you have sliding that friction will oppose. So that is why joints are very important here. Okay. So that's item one. The key thing that we use here is what is called Coulomb's law, but it's not really by the Coulomb. It was by a guy by the name of Amonton, but that's a whole other story. Coulomb's law states that uh, this friction force can have a magni magnitude which is maximum mu times n. This is where many, many people make a mistake. So please remember friction can be anything less than mu times n. Maximum is mu times n. Okay. Third thing is solving friction problems requires you to guess some direction for motion or sliding and then check whether it is correct. So those are the three things that you should remember. Okay, now let's get started. So the problem for friction is that we have to check many possibilities. It can slide in two ways. So if I have a body like this, it can slide this way, right? It can go either, uh, uh, either to the left or to the right or it can tip like this or like that. So without friction, there is no question of tipping, it will always slide. But with friction, you can also have this kind of tipping motion, that is things can tumble over. So I will show you with an example and you can see how this works. I want yeah, there you go. So basically you can see that uh, there are two kinds of possibilities and it depends upon the geometry of the body. It can either slide or it can topple. Okay. So this is what we have to worry about. Okay. So just to get us going and we want to get this free body diagram right, 
a sliding joint is one in which uh, things can if there is no motion I have a very simple free body diagram no, no motion in the y direction no motion in the x direction no rotation and then if I allow motion by removing a constraint so suppose I am going to allow it to sway I remove that constraint so if I have this kind of a setup what will happen is it will slide that is the one motion that is allowed ok so um, in a sliding joint without friction this will be the representation ok now if it is in some other angle you have to make sure that your axis coincides with the direction of motion what I mean by that is put the forces like that ok and please remember adjust the coordinates according to the motion of each rigid body and the other thing is number of allowed motions plus number of constraint loads must be equal to 3 we will see that this, this calculation matters to us quite a bit so we are going to look at situations in which we have uh, a sliding joint ok we are going to uh, 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 do a more convenient representation for a sliding joint what I mean by that is if I look at this situation my original free body diagram had normal force somewhere here in the center and a moment and uh, let us say the moment was like that m ok now instead of doing that I am going to draw this in a different way I am going to say the normal force acts at some other location and the distance from which the normal force acts is called x so notice this is acting through the center of mass this is not acting through the center of mass ok where you put x is not important but the idea is now we are going to replace force plus moment with force at unknown location So, in fact, the moment generated by this force m m will be equal to if this this total distance is l m will be equal to n times l minus x. So, the moment generated is related to the unknown distance x. So, either I can do this or this. We will find this to be more convenient. So, what it is is that for sliding joints, we will always draw a free body diagram that looks like this. The normal force is off center. So. and the location of the normal force from some location in the body is x so we will choose it in different ways but that is the basic idea ok so we have a more convenient representation this is what we are going to use we will not use this ok now we talked about sliding versus tipping over let us look at a, a particular example if I look at a body like this its free body diagram will look like this so here is P here is the center and mg acts like this what we will do is we will deliberately put the normal force away like that at a distance x ok now remember this is a rigid body this is not a particle that is why the location of the normal force matters so sliding is about this force uh, so let us draw uh, the friction force will go like this f ok sliding is about the friction force f and it tells you that the magnitude of f has to be less than mu times normal that means f has to lie between minus mu n and plus mu n so what happens is if the body is going to slide this way then the friction force will be like this see this means that the body is sliding this way if the body is sliding this way then the friction force will be opposite direction see what I mean and we obtain the friction force by equilibrium conditions P minus F equal to 0 and if I plot if I gradually increase P So if I gradually increase P what will happen is F will start increasing it will go like that 
keeps increasing and as long as it is less than mu static times normal there will be no slip all this region is no slip once it comes here that's called impending motion that is at that point it's about to slip and this is what we are interested in once it slips the friction force becomes constant its magnitude is mu kinetic times n the direction of the friction force depends upon which way we slip and the way you do that is by choosing the sign okay if i want to make it go one way other way so what it is is that what we will do is we will always draw one free body diagram and choose the different values of f depending upon whether we think it's going to slide up or down okay this is as far as sliding goes tipping is an entirely different situation tipping is about this value x and it is about moment equilibrium see this one was about force equilibrium right tipping is about moment equilibrium so now i have zero less than x less than l we will look at this problem in more detail so don't worry about it basically what will happen is if i go on increasing p the location at which the normal force acts will go on shifting towards the corner when the location becomes equal to the corner that is x becomes equal to zero location of normal has reached corner then it will tip so until then it will not tip beyond that it will tip so for friction sliding this is the condition for tipping this is the condition so we have to check these conditions you can see that there are two conditions here two conditions here so i can do lots of different possibilities okay so we have to be clever about how we do it idea is the following this is a guess and check problem so what you have to do is for each sliding surface make the best guess as to slip direction and put friction force opposite to it write the equations of equilibrium without substituting for friction don't put f equal to mu n here don't put this just leave it as f and substitute later this is a very important point for solving okay don't put the friction force equal to mu n automatically wait for it later okay then count the number of unknowns and equations assuming friction force is an unknown friction is unknown okay so that's one of the things you have to count then based on the condition assume the algebraic value for friction this is where we are going to put either plus mu n or minus mu n depending upon which way it's going to slip how many assumptions you have to make depends upon how many this counting problem if you know how many equations you extra equations you need you have to make that many different possible assumptions so we will look at that then you have to solve and then once you have solved you have to check whether the inequalities are satisfied that is the location of the normal force has to be within the within the ends of the body the friction force has to be less than mu n and all of that and then you have to go back and check if that doesn't work come back and re guess this is the process this process is kind of tricky because figuring out this thing is kind of uh, painful that's what we are going to do next